Is this possible with just 2D shape layers? When you create the shape layer, you can manipulate it in just two dimensions. But as soon as you enable 3D and rotate it in 3D space, it looks flat. I found a workaround that preserves the stroke width and retains all the shape layer benefits like a tapered and dashed stroke. And you can create simple objects like a 3D sphere, a 3D cube with a wiggle paths operator applied to, or a 3D pyramid with a repeater operator. This is possible in After Effects, although shape layers can't even exist in 3D space. For simple 3D animations you would use for logo reveals, explainer animations, or animated HUD elements, you don't necessarily have to switch to a 3D program like Cinema 4D. You can fully control the animation within After Effects. This is quite a simple tutorial you don't need expert knowledge for. There is a little downside though because you need tons of shape layers and null objects. But in one of my next videos, I'm gonna present to you a solution where you just need one single shape layer that contains the 3D object and an additional null layer to control the rotation, the position and the scale. By the way, you can download the After Effects project file of this little cube for free so you can take a closer look at my approach. Okay, let's jump right into After Effects for the easy version. Let's create a composition 3840 by 2160 pixels, that's 4K, Name it cube because we're gonna start to create a cube. Then double click on the rectangle tool that adds a new shape layer into the composition. Open rectangle and delete fill. Open rectangle path, uncheck the constraint proportions checkbox and set the size to 1000 by 1000. Set the stroke width to maybe 40. Line cap to round cap and line join to round join. To make it look more pleasing, choose your favorite color. And just for fun, duplicate stroke 1, which creates another stroke 2. Go back to stroke 1, set color to almost white and stroke width to 20. Now we have something like a neon look. Right click on rectangle path and select convert to Bezier path. Open path 1, select path. Go to Window and open up the script panel Create Nodes from Paths that you can find at the very bottom of this menu. Let's dock it somewhere here because we'll need it later again. Then click on the Points Follow Nodes button. This creates four nodes for each path point. And when you move the nodes, you'll see that the according points of the path are connected to them. Let's take a closer look at the shape layer. We can see that the script added an expression in the path attribute to let the magic happen. But we don't have to bother about it. In the effect controls panel, you can see that the script also created four drop-down menu controls that determine which null layers the points are connected to. So when we duplicate one of the null objects, place it somewhere here, Go into one of the drop-down menus and select the new null layer. The corresponding point will take the position of the duplicated null. Okay, let's undo this. As I said in the beginning, you can't move a path point into 3D space. But what if I activate the 3D checkboxes of the nulls? Can we outsmart After Effects? Let's select one of the null layers and move it into Z space. The shape layer is still connected to it. And what if we grab the Orbit tool and drag it in the Compositions window? Unbelievable! It seems that the shape layer broke through the 2D wall, but let me explain it later. Let's undo this again, but keep the 3D perspective. And before we move on, duplicate the composition and name it Sphere, because we can reuse it as our starting point to create the 3D sphere later in this tutorial. In the cube composition, select these three null layers and parent them to the top null layer. Then change the Z position to negative 500. Duplicate all layers and drag it on top of the timeline to separate them from the other layers. When we move this new null object with its parented nulls, we can see that the new shape layer isn't connected to them. That's why we should select the duplicated shape layer, go to the effect controls panel and set the drop down menus to the new null layers. Let's check if we connected them correctly by moving the top null layer to 500 in Z space. 
To complete the cube, we need four more strokes to connect this null to this null, this to this, this to this, and this null layer to this. Maybe it would be a bit faster if we just duplicate this whole setup and rotate it by 90 degrees. But for my purpose, I want to avoid overlapping strokes. So let's undo this. Of course, it's up to your intention how you connect the lines. For example, we can duplicate this shape layer and change the drop-down menus to the other null objects to get a diagonal connection. In this example, every edge has its own shape layer, so I can adjust them individually. In another example, I connected as many points as possible in one go to keep the number of shape layers minimized. Let's return to our initial composition and finish the cube. Make sure that no layer is selected by clicking somewhere in an empty space. Grab the pen tool with Roto Bezier unchecked and draw a line with two points. Click the Points Follow Nulls button and delete the newly created null layers. Then select the new shape layer and change the drop-down menus to the null object on layer 2 and to the one on layer 7. Delete Stroke and Fill, go to the other shape layer, copy the stroke operators and paste it into the new shape layer to match the look. Duplicate the shape layer and change the drop-down menus to layer 4 and layer 9. Repeat it until the remaining null layers are connected to each other. It might look weird now because the lines overlap in a strange way, so you might change the layer order of the shape layers depending on the camera perspective. And this is our final 3D wireframe cube. You can create a new null layer, Toggle on the 3D layer checkbox, select all other null layers, check the Shy option and parent them to the new null layer. Now, activate the Shy mode that hides the null layers in order to keep the composition clean and tidy. I left this null layer visible because it's our controller to rotate, scale and reposition the cube. Okay. Now, here's the explanation how it's even possible for a 2D shape layer to behave like a 3D object. For this purpose, I switched to another composition that I prepared before. It's basically the same cube we created before, and we are seeing it twice in two separate views. When I rotate the cube, we don't see any difference. As soon as I move the playhead forward, the right window changes the perspective, revealing how it actually works. This is the camera we are seeing through in the left view, and this rectangle represents our composition's 2D view. And as you can see, the null objects are in real After Effects 3D space, whereas the shape layer in reality is just 2D projected onto the composition's window. This becomes obvious when I move the null objects. The shape layer points seem to coincide with the null objects in the left window, but in the right window it shows they are not. Those of you who are familiar with After Effects expressions know that the 2Comp expression is responsible for it. My explanation is just a simplification of what's going on, but I hope it was still comprehensible for you. Let's move on to create a pyramid. Duplicate the cube composition and name it Pyramid. Open the composition, unshy the layers and select the shape layer with a diagonal stroke to delete it. From here it's quite easy to change the cube to a pyramid. Select these four null layers and change the X and Y position to 0. Then select the control null and set X rotation to negative 90 degrees. And that's it! The last 3D primitive what's left on our list is the sphere. Open up the sphere composition that already contains the square we used to create the cube. Create a new null layer and make it a 3D layer. Select the rest of the null layers and parent them to the top null object. Like in the cube composition, this is our control null. Again, select all null layers except of the control null and check the shy checkboxes. Now apply the round corners operator and increase the radius until the square is morphed to a circle. Duplicate all layers and adjust the drop down menus to the new null layers. Make sure that you don't accidentally take the control null. 
Rotate the control now to 90 degrees in Y rotation. Duplicate this setup again, adjust the drop down menus, select the control null, set Y rotation back to zero, and change X rotation to 90 degrees. This is our equator. Duplicate this bunch of layers again, change the drop down menus to the new null layers, select the new control null, change the Y position to 705, and set scale to 75%. This is the northern latitude. For the southern latitude, duplicate the setup, adjust the drop downs, and change the control null position to 1455. Then create a new null layer, which will be our main controller, check its 3D layer checkbox, and link the other subcontrollers to it. As I said in the beginning, this technique results in too many null layers, but luckily we can hide them in the shy mode. Now that we have the basic setup for the 3D sphere, we can start to play around with the look of the strokes. In this case, the lines of the sphere look a bit messy, so I'm gonna reduce the width of the latitude, change the color, and make the stroke dashed. Copy the stroke operators and paste them into the other shape layers. As for the longitudes, I'm gonna apply a trim operator, set end to 99%, go to taper, and change end length to 100%. Same for the other stroke. Then I'm gonna copy it and paste it into the other longitude shape layer. Again, change the layer order of the shape layers when you feel it's necessary. Looks good. We can now open the pyramid composition, change the stroke of the square base, apply a repeater operator, open transform, change X position to zero, increase the Y position and decrease the scale. Nice effect. Last but not least, open the cube composition, select the diagonal stroke, change the color and apply a trim paths operator to it. Change start to 60 and end to 90. Then you can apply a wiggle paths operator to it and play around with the values. Maybe animate the controller's rotation and hit play. Looks like an electric lightning bolt trapped in a box. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun trying out combining different shape layer operators. It lies in the nature of workarounds that they come with some catches. Like I said before, you have to use so many shape layers and null objects. That makes it very messy and almost unusable if you want to create more than one 3D object in a single composition. And as it's just a fake 3D solution, After Effects doesn't know what's in front and what's behind. As you've seen in the tutorial, the elements overlap strangely in certain camera perspectives. So how would you fix it if you want to animate a full rotation? You could split the layers and change the layer order at the right moment. Circles are even more difficult to handle. They work best when the focal length is very high, better when your view is isometric. Look how weird it gets when you have a small focal length. The circles start to distort. So try to stay in an orthographic or isometric camera angle. But other than that, I think it fulfills its purpose for simple 3D animations. See you next time.